hand you over to our first speaker, Sam, uh, Research Coordinator at Campaign Against Arms Trade. Thank you very much, Katie, and thank you to all our port panellists and audience for joining us. The war in Yemen has now been going on for seven years and the Saudi coalition rolled in it for over six. Over 130,000 people have been directly killed in the fighting, including 13,000 civilians in targeted attacks, and many more as a result of hunger and disease in what is the world's worst humanitarian catastrophe. Over 24 million Yemenis are in need of humanitarian aid and hundreds of thousands face starvation. This crisis is a direct result of the war. The destruction of health facilities, infrastructure and agricultural facilities, the Saudi-led blockade of Houthi-controlled ports and the obstruction of humanitarian aid by all parties. Coalition airstrikes, chiefly Saudi Arabia and the UAE, had killed 8,772 civilians in targeted attacks up to March 2021, according to the Yemen Data Project. Nearly one third of all airstrikes have hit civilian targets, while in another third the target was unclear. The coalition has repeatedly targeted hospitals, schools, densely populated residential areas, marketplaces, civilian infrastructure, and large civilian gatherings such as weddings and funerals. Ali and Omar will say more about these patterns of attacks later. The UN panel of experts for Yemen, along with human rights organizations such as Amnesty Human Rights Watch, and of course, Muatana for Human Rights, have investigated many of these attacks in detail and concluded that a large number of them are highly likely to be violations of international humanitarian law, IHL, and in many cases, war crimes. These bombings have been carried out using aircraft from the US, UK and France and with bombs and missiles from the US, UK and Italy and other equipment from other countries. A little over half of Saudi Arabia's attack aircraft are UK supplied tornadoes and typhoons with the rest from the US. The UK and US governments and arms industries provide a constant flow of spare parts, maintenance, repair, training and other support without which the Saudi air war could not continue. The supply of the deadly weaponry used in this war is thus not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing daily activity in which both the governments and arms companies involved willingly participate in full knowledge of the horrific consequences for the people of Yemen. As you may know, campaign against arms trade is once again challenging the UK government's decision to continue in licensing arms exports to Saudi Arabia for use in Yemen. In 2019, the Court of Appeal ruled that the government's process of deciding on these licenses was irrational and unlawful and ordered them to retake the decisions based on a lawful process. Last July, the government announced that this review was complete that any violations of IHL by Saudi Arabia were only isolated incidents and thus the sales could continue. This April CAT was granted permission for a new judicial review challenging this outrageous decision, which we believe flies in the face of the overwhelming evidence of repeated attacks on civilians and civilian objects in violation of IHL. Our judicial review, however, is a matter of administrative law, of how the government conducts its business and takes decisions. If the court finds once again that the government has violated UK arms export control laws, they will not be finding anyone guilty of a crime. Yet the horrific crimes committed in Yemen by all parties and the complicity of Western governments cry out for accountability and justice. Ali will have more to say on Watana's efforts on the ground to promote accountability. Doing so faces huge barriers in an ongoing conflict where the warring parties show little or no willingness to hold their own to account, and where external parties enjoy the support of permanent members of the UN Security Council. The International Criminal Court also lacks jurisdiction over the warring parties, as neither Yemen nor the coalition states are signatories. I hope that one day those responsible for war crimes among the Houthis, 
Yemeni pro-government forces and militia and coalition governments and armed forces will one day face, face justice. Right now, that seems some way off. However, the European states that continue to arm the Saudi coalition are parties to the ICC. It is typically citizens of the UK and other European countries in government and industry who take the decisions to supply arms and the decisions are taken on the soil of these countries. These acts of supplying the arms that are used to commit atrocities in Yemen could therefore potentially fall under ICC jurisdiction. It is with this in mind that in December 2019, a coalition of NGOs led by European Centre for Constitutional and Human Rights, and also including Pat, Muatana, Amnesty International and others, presented a submission to the Office of the Prosecutor of the ICC, the OTP, asking them to open a preliminary investigation into whether government officials, elected and civil servants, and arms company executives may be responsible for aiding and abetting war crimes in Yemen through the provision of arms. This includes armed suppliers in the UK, France, Italy, Germany and Spain. The submission ran to over 300 pages with extensive details, both of the atrocities committed in Yemen, the arms supplied, the evidence of their use and legal arguments. This file is sitting with the OTP who have been examining the evidence submitted and ultimately with the new chief prosecutor, UK lawyer Karim Khan QC. Any process like this takes time, of course, but we hope that we may see a decision on whether to take the investigation forward sometime this year. If the case is taken forward, it will represent a major new step in accountability for abuses committed with arms acquired through the international arms market. In a few cases, individuals have been prosecuted for their role in enabling war crimes by supplying arms, such as a Dutch businessman convicted in the Netherlands for supplying arms to the Liberian war criminal, Charles Taylor. But when it comes to arms supplied with the permission of governments, we are only just beginning to see criminal investigations on this. In Italy, Prosecutors have been ordered by the courts to reopen a case that they wanted to drop into RWM Italia for supplying aerial munitions to Saudi Arabia used in Yemen. The case was brought by the Italian peace group Greta di Bersano. No similar cases have been brought in other arms supplying states. The ICC, of course, is only authorised to act where national authorities cannot or will not pursue cases themselves. This case also breaks new ground in putting arms companies rather than just government policies in the spotlight and challenging their insistence that everything they do is perfectly legal as it is authorised by governments. But companies have their own duty of due diligence over the impact of their activities on human rights in the countries in which they do business. Companies will rightly go into great detail on how they ensure their supply chains do not involve modern slavery. Yet arms companies refuse to take any responsibility for the actual use of their lethal products. They shift it all to the government issuing export licenses. Yet at the same time, they go to great lengths to influence government arms export policy, enjoying a privileged voice in the corridors of power. They also elide the fact that an arms export license may permit the supply of arms, but it does not require it. We believe they should not be able to evade their own responsibility in this way. Even for the ICC to open an investigation would put decision makers, political and corporate, on notice that their decisions to arm warring parties are not simply matters of economic profit and loss or a bureaucratic matter of finding an interpretation of export license criteria that suits their foreign policy or defense industrial interests. They are literally matters of life and death and ones for which they may one day be held personally accountable. We believe that the evidence of war crimes in Yemen and of complicity on the part of Western governments and arms companies 
is overwhelming, and you will hear more about this evidence in the coming talks. We hope that Karim Khan and the OTP will follow this evidence and pursue this investigation as a major step towards accountability in this terrible war. Thank you very much.